Juggalo collectibles is the shit. You know what I'm saying? Come on with that shit, man. He needs to be smacked. You know what I mean? For the, like everything I know in rap is the wicked shit. You know what I'm saying? It's this shit, the shit that don't get played on the fucking radio. We don't no we don't have to wait for our new fucking single or any of that shit. Let's say somebody that's on top of the world right now, Busta Rhymes. Let's say when Busta Rhymes' new album comes out next year or the year after, for some reason, for some reason, one guy at BET and one guy at MTV are like, nah, we'll pass on a video. That's like it. You know what I'm saying? The minute the video ain't there, people don't even know the record's out. You know what I'm saying? But in our shit, it's generally a lot smaller, but it's so fucking secure. Like, we always know what our new album's gonna sell. You know what I'm saying? It's depending on how long we're willing to tour and how much we're willing to do off it. You see what I'm saying? It's like, we don't have to wait and pray for anybody else to, to, for anybody else to give us that success. It's up to us. You know what I'm saying? We were signed to D3 for our last album, and uh, we got a million dollars for it, a little over a million f for that album. And uh, the Wraith has sold something like 250,000 copies right now. So then they come back and they say, all right, look, we'll give you 500,000 for this next record because this one's at 250,000, you know. We'll give you 500,000 for the next record. And we're like, check this out, fuck off. You know what I'm saying? We've been trying to get out of a major label deal forever you know what i'm saying in fact we're just our next album is going to come out on psychopathic because if it does and we have red distribution which is sony so if our shit does fucking two hundred fifty thousand on psychopathic i'm gonna buy my mom a yacht do you understand what i'm saying that's the independent music business that's why i was buying new cars and living in a penthouse selling fifty thousand back in the day you know what i'm saying our fucking merchandising and our fucking uh, shit is so vast and so many different different avenues and things we got going on. There's no way I can even keep on what's going on outside of this world and what's on the radio and what's on fucking MTV. Fuck that. Look at this. We have a whole universe, man. I want to show you guys back there. This is our merchandise. See, we're all about T-shirts and hats and all of that shit. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. If you're a bitch, our shit is off the hook for bitches. Look at this. Twisted bitch. It looks all nice, like baby colors, and it says twisted bitch. That's dope to me. And, and if you're a baby. Oh, yeah, if you're a baby, little baby, baby wear. You know, we got the dopest shit for bitches, though, man. Like, uh, you know, we got camouflage shit for bitches. Juggalettes, that's what I, I, you know, juggalos and juggalettes. And then, uh, you know, look at even for the girls, they got the blaze with the fresh raider style. You know what I'm saying? It's so dope, man. Bitches look so hot in that shit. Fuck that. And then look, how dope is this for a bitch? Camouflage colors, army style, representing psychopathic. That's dope, man. You know what I'm saying? We fucking got out of Def Jam and signed with D3. And that was it. We went to an independent. We said, Let's, we've been with these labels. Now let's go to an independent. And now that, that we're like, we can do everything they're doing our goddamn selves. You know what I mean? Why the fuck we doing it? And it took us a while because we were always signed. You see what I'm saying? But then we started putting Twisted out and all these other groups. And, and then they started selling. And then we said, what are we doing with us? Now let's say anybody killer. His debut album just came out about a month ago. It's already at 25,000 copies. Dope! Dope. Maybe not to some, you know, whatever. I don't give a fuck what Billboard's writing about or what Rolling Stone's writing about. Anybody killer lives in a trailer. You know what I'm saying? Now he's about to buy a fucking house, man. These are kids balling off the rap game. That's the shit, man. It ain't about who the source writes about, man. You know what I'm saying? Not when you're buying a fucking house in the real world off your fucking rhymes. Freestyle battle these nuts, motherfucker. I sell my shit. Okay, anyway. Oh. Wrestling style. We own our own wrestling promotion called JCW. This is JCW Volume 2 right now. This is JCW Volume 2. This is Volume 1. We got the DVD too. Anyway, we run a wrestling show. We hire these wrestlers and we wrestle in the main event. You know what we just finished working on? 
Insane Clown Posse happened in Columbus, Ohio, the main event, and we just did it. It's JCW Volume 3. It should be out right now. Insane Clown Posse versus Feminem and Kid Cock. You got to see it to believe it. It's pure family. That's why like, it, it means something to everybody, everything. But it ain't got nothing to do with us. They're not really our fans. We just provide the music, the background for them. You know what I'm saying? They got this whole community started. They have their own gatherings. We went to see a fucking wrestling show in Florida. Uh, we stopped in Florida on our way to Puerto Rico just to chill for the weekend, me and Rudy and Ishan. And we went to a wrestling show in Florida, and there was a mini gathering in the parking lot. The Juggalos had their own fucking mini gatherings. So we're just walking to this wrestling show, and there's fucking like 50 Juggalos painted up like me. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? How did they know we were going to be here? They just happened to be there. There's mini gatherings, and they just paint up, and they all go somewhere. They all happen to be going. They all had a barbecue, and then they went to wrestling. It was the coolest shit I ever seen in my life. And we happened to walk into it. And they were tripping. They were like, what up? You know what I mean? It was the shit, man. Man, I don't know about the American dream, but I know I'm living our dream. You know what I'm saying? Without question. This um, company makes dreams come true. Yeah. That's the God's honest truth. Me and He's Joey, we've known each other since we were little kids. We were like, man, one of us are going to make it. We knew we were going to make it. Joe became fucking Violent J on top of the world. He was like, look that, fuck that. He knew I had a passion for wrestling. I love wrestling. He was like, fuck that. We're going to open up our own wrestling federation and, and make Rudy you does. a star. I met him getting autographs behind Joe Louis Arena. He was getting wrestlers autographs, man. And you know what? When we made it to the WWF and we were on the cover of the WWF magazine, uh, when we wrestled at Joe Louis Arena, the very same place that we used to get autographs right. from, me and Shaggy, where did we go? We went back to that same door to look and see who was out there to get autographs to tell them you can fucking do it because we did it, you know what I'm saying? That's right. But there was nobody there. Where's all the fucking dreamers? Everybody's a badass now. You know what I'm saying? There was nobody even waiting out there. I was like, this is bullshit. The fucking parking lot's empty. Where's the little Rudy and Joe's at? You know what I'm saying? Where's the fucking dreamers? Everybody's a badass. We're clowns. People look at that like, fuck them. You know what I mean? And that's the shit. That's how I was my whole life. In school, they used to say, if you step on a cracked tile, you got to kiss one of the Bruce brothers. That was me and my brother. You see what I'm saying? My point is, we always been the fucking clowns, man. Even when, as when, a rap star. You, you know what I'm saying? The, we're the still points. the goofs. We're still the non taken seriously. Yeah, we're not funny. I can't rhyme. I can't sing. But you know what I'm saying? We're still right up in the fucking game. I don't understand that. We're not on the sidelines. We're in the game. You see what I'm saying? We 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 square tight. We don't need no we don't need to be on nobody's record or need nobody on our shit to get on. You know what I mean? We've been on. That's how I look at it. Man, let me tell you this. When I worked at a gas station, I knew I knew, you know what I'm saying? I knew I'd have all this. And you know what else? I know I'll have this 10 years from now. Everything we built is our own personal thing. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, fuck that. And Peter, is... dude, it's not the old cliche because like we've been friends since we were little kids. All of this whole crew, we've, we've been friends since we were children. Man. Like so people and we, say- And we built this together. Yeah, we knew that. You gotta know that or get the fuck out. As far as everything I know, but I don't know shit because the truth is almost everybody out there got discovered and signed and, you know, off of a freestyle battle or something. And there's two ways up the mountain. You can have a hit song and somebody discover you and it's like riding a ski lift. Or you can walk up that motherfucker. And we walked. You know what I'm saying? That's all I know. We walked. It's like Eminem, come on, man. He's he's just like legendary worldwide status. And the beef we had with him, that was, what, 11 years ago? You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's like, you know, beefing with somebody in high school and going to your, like, 20th high school reunion. Like, you're still going to have heat with that kid, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know what he calls he, I don't know what he calls it, but we call it, you know, they, some people call it horrorcore. Some people call it the wicked shit. But uh, it was cool to see him dabbling with that again on the, on the uh, first relapse record. 
you know what I mean, with like 3 a.m., I think it was called, and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, you know, there's no beef, you know what I mean? Um, you know who squashed our beef was Proof before he passed away. You know, he contacted us, and uh, we had like a bowling game and everything. It was really cool, man. And, you know, we're something different, you know. They could have skipped right over us and said, oh, forget them. Let's just squash beef with everybody else. But they included us.